Hey guys, it's Ryan. Uh, this video we're going to talk about what to expect on part one of the dental board exam. So this exam consists of 400 questions in groups of 100. So each section of the exam you'll have 100 questions. Um, they're going to include topics from the anatomic sciences, mostly gross anatomy and histology, biochemistry and physiology, Microbiology, microbiology and pathology, and dental anatomy and occlusion. Now the sections of 100 are not grouped by these topics. So in other words, they're all mixed together. You'll get a gross anatomy question, and then two biochemistry questions, and then a pathology question, and so on. So here's a breakdown of all the four subject areas and the topics that are included. So this is straight from the ADA website, their guide for the National Board uh, Part 1 exam. And so uh, here's a number of estimated questions from each topic. So when you're, fo when you're studying, you can focus on the topics that have um, more items associated with them. And then here are uh, the breakdowns for the other two subject areas. So the timing of the exam uh, it seems like a really long exam. Eight and a half hours is not a short time, but there are a lot of breaks and optional areas that we'll talk about. So the tutorial is you have 15 minutes allotted for it. Um, I don't think you need the whole time, but you can take as much of that as you need to to get comfortable. Um, and then the post-exam survey, I mean, we're all done with the exam at that point. So there's 15 minutes allotted, but you can just kind of blow through that. Um, each break is 15 minutes except for the one between sections 2 and 3. When I took the exam I just trudged through the first 200 and then took a snack, water, bathroom break um, and then trudged through the second 200. But you can come up with your own strategy. Um, and that's another reason why practice exams are so great because you can see what works for you. Now I'm a relatively slow test taker and I had plenty of time left over after each section. So although the exam is blocked out for eight and a half hours, I wouldn't expect needing all of it, although it's there if you need it. So the standalone questions are your classic A through E or A through D multiple choice. The testlet questions are similar, but they have a case attached to them, which I'll show you in the next slide. Um, they're all grouped together, so you should get 40 at the end of section 2 and then 40 at the beginning of section 3. And this is kind of what they'll look like. So you get a case with a bunch of irrelevant information and some relevant information, and that's for you to figure out what's relevant and irrelevant. And there's roughly around, I'd say, 10 questions per case, but that can vary. So I figured we could just go through this together. This is, again, straight from the ADA guide um, for the board part one. I'll put a link in the description to this. Um, they don't have answers included, but we're going to go through them together now. So um, they give you age, sex, height, weight, blood pressure, all the basic things you'd get from an information gathering appointment with your patient for the first time. And then it gives you a more in-depth scenario of their situation. So question one asks, uh, this patient needs an immediate referral to his physician for which of the following? And so we're going to look at this and some distractors are that he is obese, he has smoked for 25 years, but the main thing that you should look at is that his blood pressure, he does have moderate hypertension, and he is currently taking a diuretic and even low-dose aspirin, and his father died of a heart attack at age 52. So all these signs are pointing towards a potential heart issue. He hasn't seen his physician for two years, so he needs immediate referral to get his uncontrolled hypertension taken care of. Number two, the patient initially resists accepting the need for referral to his physician and requests that the dentist proceed to address his chief complaint. Now this is an ethical question, um, and the conflict here is that he um, resists accepting the need for this referral and he just wants the dentist to proceed and take care of um, the tooth that's bothering him or this, this filling that fell out. 
And so if you've looked over the code of ethics, you'll know like these terms will all sound familiar. They're like the five codes of ethics. And so um, the issue here is that you're juggling between um, doing no harm to the patient by not referring them to a physician when they should be, and you're, you're also juggling autonomy or the patient's um, their right to make their own decisions for themselves. So those are the two things that are kind of in the balance in this uh, ethical dilemma. Now, question three, uh, which would be the most likely consequence of the patient's delay in having the lost restoration replaced? So if I read through this scenario, um, the patient presents for replacement of filling in tooth number 19. They've lost it over a year ago. Um, it's not sensitive, and it's a occlusal restoration with a fractured cusp. Um, so the most likely consequence, uh, mesial drift of tooth number 18 would only make sense if it was like a distal proximal uh, filling that fell out or something of 19. Um, loss of canine disclusion, that doesn't really make sense. Loss of vertical dimension, again, you have other posterior teeth that are maintaining the vertical dimension. Super eruption of the opposing tooth into that empty space uh, because of a lost occlusal restoration makes the most sense, would be the most likely consequence. And finally, the patient calls the day following the endodontic procedure, complaining of pain at the local anesthesia injection site and inability to open fully. Most likely cause is... Um, so if we look at these choices, we kind of have two muscle answers, two nerve answers. I'd rule out the nerve answers because those would be more likely you'd be having a paralysis or a numbness if it was a nerve problem. Spasm of the temporalis muscle would make sense if it was a problem opening. Injection into the medial pterygoid muscle makes the most sense because that muscle is responsible for elevating the mandible but also protruding it. And if you remember when you fully open the mandible, it moves forward as part of the translation process. So injection into this muscle would be um, the most likely cause. So the answers here you can go over later would be D, A, A, and C. And these are pretty, um, they're pretty good examples of what you'd expect uh, for a test slit um, case group of questions. So some more about the exam. This, it's judged on a scale score from 49 to 99. 75 or above is a pass. Now, this does not mean that you need to get 75% or more questions right. That depends on how difficult the particular exam is judged to be. And then they adju adjust your score based on that. So people have guessed how many questions you need to get right on average. Based on experience and research, we think around 60 to 70 percent, but there's no guarantee that that's um, accurate. The point being, you should get used to missing questions so that you don't panic on test day. And honestly, um, I felt this way. Probably you'll feel like you're getting a lot of questions wrong, and that's okay. That's fine. Just rely on what you know and what you studied and don't panic. You can get a lot wrong. Um, and that's why it's so important to do practice questions to adjust to that kind of feeling. Um, and this is a computerized exam, just like the DAT. So you remember having your, abil your ability to mark questions. Um, there's this kind of cool feature. You could cross out answer choices that you didn't um, think were right by right-clicking on them. Uh, I love taking exams on paper. I like writing notes to myself and circling stuff. Obviously, we can't do that with a computerized exam, but being able to cross out answer choices was kind of like the closest thing to that. And also, we get our classic whiteboards and markers. Um, now, I actually didn't know this when I was taking it. I was trying to write out, I had a bunch of like charts and pictures and stuff planned out that I was going to draw on my scratch paper. So I used the tutorial to do this, um, but that's actually not allowed, or at least at my test center it wasn't and they collected my whiteboards and gave me new ones. So I kind of started wasting time in my exam. So just wait until you start your first section to start um, drawing and writing your notes to yourself. 
Um, but like I said, there's plenty of time, so don't freak out. There's plenty of time to do that before you before you actually start answering questions. And now for some study tips. Um, so uh, there's this guy wh whose channel is called Past the Dental Boards. I think his videos are really, really good. Um, so I'd check those out. I'd also check out my videos. I have some on uh, part one of the boards. I have a folder with those videos and I'll be making more in the future. Um, the dental decks are like the classic, mo probably most popular way to study. Um, I, I did get them and I'm one of those people who likes to buy like everything new, like have like the newest edition of a textbook and stuff. That's totally, totally not necessary. They're really expensive. I would just try to buy them uh, off eBay. If you can get like a really old copy, even if they're crappy, it doesn't matter because I'm going to recommend only going through the questions. There is so much detail on the back of the cards. Just go through the questions and I think you'll be fine. You'll get a, a good amount of information from them. Now the Dental Boards Mastery app, I really, really like this. Um, you can have it on your phone, your tablet, and now they've um, added it so you can link your account online. So you can kind of have your progress going and linked between all different um, ways of using the app. And so I thought their questions were really good. Um, you could go back to ones that you didn't do well on. And so it was just really organized well. I highly recommend getting this app. Um, and it's usually on sale during like holidays and stuff. So that's definitely something I would check out. Um, old ADA release questions are really helpful. Again, practice questions are critical. Um, there are tens of thousands of questions that board examiners will pick from. But honestly, there's only so much they can ask, and this will help you get in the zone, recognize what you need to focus on, and work on your test-taking endurance and all that good stuff. And then focus on the head and the neck. We're going to be dentists, people. And yes, I know there'll, you'll get a question on like the lower back, and you'll be like, what the hell was this person thinking? Like, who picked this question? But most of them will be on the head and neck, so I think that's should be your focus. Um, as far as studying time-wise, start early, start months in advance, start just with practice questions and just do a couple each day, and then go hardcore for at least two, maybe three weeks if you can. Um, and if I had to pick, I would know gross anatomy and dental anatomy occlusion really, really well if I had to focus on topics. All right, guys. Um, that's it. If you found this video helpful, leave a like and comment on videos you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.